All right, I'm on to the second video in this series that deals with me diving into the High Byte Intelligence Hub. All right, so in this video, what I'm going to do is sort of take a 10,000 foot view of the High Byte Intelligence Hub in terms of or through the lens of how I do systems integration, which is the mainstay of my work. Systems integrator, I am called a systems integrator. Um, it's a kind of an abstract term. But really and truly what I like to put on my call card is this. I try to get things I don't want to talk to one another to eventually talk to one another. Well, most of the time anyways. But I think systems integrator might get me more jobs. So I want to just break down systems integration the way I see it, right? To provide a framework for then looking at High Byte Intelligence Hub and what it can do and how it can help me. So systems integration. If I have a thing and I want to integrate that thing, whether it's hardware or software, what it really means in the end is two things. I want to be able to read data from the device or thing. I want to be able to write data to it. And that is what I call talk. Now writing data means you may be writing commands to it as well, but it's essentially read and write, whether it's hardware or software in the end. Okay. Now, read and write um, lately has been called pull and push. It has been called subscribe and publish if you're doing a lot of MQTT stuff. And this also applies to um, High Byte Intelligence Hub. But this is what it is. Now, if I have to integrate hardware in, let's say, a plant, um, I ask two questions. The first question is, what communication ports does it have? RS-232, 485, Ethernet, CAN bus, what? And then what protocols does it support? So I need to know about industrial communication protocols. I also need to know about OPC Classic and OPC UA. Uh, so to integrate hardware, this is what I need to know. Now you don't abandon this by just going and use High Byte Intelligence Hub. You still have to have some knowledge and some, some of some of these disciplines to be able to use a High Byte Intelligence Hub and also products like it. Okay. So you need to know that as an integrator. Um, move me over here. And then if I'm going to integrate software. Now, I integrate software, not only industrial automation. I'm a software engineer as well. And I work in the fields like uh, I've done software integration for financial institutions, medical institutions, the retail industry, and, and a few other industries, right? And when you're doing that sort of integration, um, if I'm looking at a piece of software to see if I, I could actually do it, I ask two questions again. Can I get to its database? See, most enterprise software is just a fancy front end with some business rule and a back end database, right? So if you could get to the database, then you're in business most of the times. Better yet, if it has an API, and even better yet, if it has a REST API. So API is application programming interface and essentially is a bunch of commands to read data and write data to and from the software. If it's a REST API, that means it commands are executed via HTTP which is great. HTTP moves through switches and subnets and firewalls really easily so that when you're talking with the IT people, they don't hate you in the organization. But what this means is that I have had to learn structured query language or SQL and REST API. And believe me, I've done a heck of a lot of integration just knowing these two. So industrial communication protocols, OPC, OPC UA, SQL and REST API, knowing these comes in really handy even when dealing with the High Byte Intelligence Hub. Let's jump to High Byte Intelligence Hub. How does all this pertain? The systems integration lens through which I'm looking at it. Okay. So we have High Byte Intelligence Hub. In a plant, in a factory, I have hardware that needs to talk to hardware, I have software that needs to talk to software, I have software that needs to talk to hardware, vice versa. All right. If I'm only going to integrate hardware and I want to bring a high byte intelligence hub into the picture, this is what I do. I get an OPC UA server, CAP server, or Matrix, and they have a dizzying array of protocol drivers, but I still need to know about industrial communication protocols to connect the OPC UA server to the hardware. I need to know about BACnet objects and Modbus registers and the really crappy way that Profibus expresses memory. I hate it. Um, all these different things. I also need to know about OPC UA and all of the endpoint URL stuff and the data model and, and the connection and TCP binary and HTTP and all that stuff. So I'd connect the High Byte Intelligence Hub to OPC UA because it can talk OPC UA. All right. 
if I'm integrating software, I still need to know how to get to the software. So once again, can I get to its database? Can I get through it through an API? So I'll be looking at SQL or REST API. Now, Hybyte has, um, the Intelligence Hub has a lot of different ways it could connect, especially to cloud services and so on. These are just some I'm talking about here. I am not good at the cloud stuff as yet. I'm still learning, so I'm not going to include that here right now. What I am going to talk about, however, is MQTT brokers. Hybyte Intelligence Hub can subscribe and publish to an MQTT, MQTT broker, right? So you can talk MQTT, which is important. So here's the thing. When I first heard about MQTT and learned about it, I was actually looking at some videos from 4.0 Solutions, Walker Reynolds, look at him. Also, subscribe to Industry 4.0 TV, Kudzai Manditereza. He's brilliant. All right, so <clears throat> I don't miss content from them at all. Now, MQTT. The thing about it is that I really like MQTT, no, but my customers, past and present, none of them in their factories have any devices that could talk MQTT. So I was thinking that, okay, if they want me to, if I want to actually reap the benefits of MQTT for them, I'm going to get a whole set of converters that could convert some of the OPC, classic OPC to OPC UA, and the OPC UA to MQTT, or maybe I'll do direct protocol conversion from Modbus to MQTT so it could subscribe to the broker. And, and it, it got kind of, it was overwhelming, right? But then I'm looking at Hybyte Intelligence Hub and say, wait a minute, this thing can talk OPC UA and it can talk MQTT. So it can act as a bridge to MQTT. Another advantage besides making systems integration scalable. To get the most out of Hybyte Intelligence Hub, from my perspective, I still need to know about industrial communication protocols, OPC UA, SQL REST API, MQTT. I need to know about all the cloud stuff as well and connecting to the cloud, but I'm still learning about that. Okay, all right. Now, this scenario here, just a basic scenario, but what is cool about this is that you know, let's say I have some hardware and some software already linked to the hub. If now I'm presented by the powers that be with a new challenge saying, hey, I have some new software I want to integrate. I don't have to touch this. I don't have to touch the existing connections that I have to the High Byte Intelligence Hub. What I have to touch to the, is, um, I have to touch the High Byte Intelligence Hub, change the configuration and also maybe change the configuration of the new software or hardware that I'm connecting to. And that's really cool so that while I'm expanding the system and changing the system, I don't have to mess around with any parts already connected to the system. And Hybyte Intelligence Hub, you could configure it on the fly. So everything else remains running while you're making changes and then etc. etc. Okay. And that's really, really important. I won't break anything. That was a point from my last video. So it makes that integration much better and acting as a bridge from OPC UA, your plant equipment and so on to MQTT, big thing right there. Good. Now, how does it do that? Again, 10,000 foot view, all right? So all these connections to the outside world, whether it's software or hardware, or whatever, you actually make some using something called connectors. Kind of obvious, right? So they have um, this abstraction in there called connectors and they have a whole set of connectors for all these things, OPC UA, SQL, REST API, MQTT, and many more. A lot of cloud stuff in there, okay? And then there's another abstraction in here called flows. What are flows, okay? Let's say data coming in from here, a flow tell, uh, allows you to configure, say, okay, see, data coming in from here, some of it, you go to this software here, and some of it, you get published to the MQTT broker. That's your flow, how the data flows in the Intelligence Hub. And let's say, <coughs> excuse me, the Intelligence Hub has to write to this OPC UA server, then where am I getting the source data to write to the uh, OPC UA server? Well, it might be coming from this source here or that source, etc. Then there are models. I'm going to oversimplify my explanation for now. When data comes in and it needs to be massaged and transformed and rearranged a bit to be published somewhere else, you use a model. Okay. So once you know about connectors, flows, and models in a high byte intelligence hub, that's how you configure it. Okay. And in subsequent videos, 
I will be getting into connectors, flows, models, and showing you how it all works. All right, so while I'm learning about it, you'll be learning about it as well. Thanks.